Hello everybody, it's Kimber here and welcome to part two of my little video diary about Ethiopia. Um, I explained briefly in my last video that this isn't a common thing for me to do but I felt very convicted to share some of the experiences I've had in the last couple of weeks and decided that this would be a, a great way to um, talk out about some stuff that's really close to my heart at the moment. So I'm in Los Angeles right now. Um, I returned a couple of days ago and have been on such a crazy high since I got back. Uh, people often talk about returning from third world experiences as being quite heavy and sort of um, a hard adjustment because of the things that you've seen. And um, I've had quite the opposite experience. Um, I've kind of come back to LA with this renewed sense of joy and excitement and hope. Um, and um, I guess, yeah, to sort of wrap up this video diary, I wanted to share some of the really exciting things that I saw in my last few days um, working with, uh, with Beza um, Outreach through Tirza, which is the charity I went over with. Um, so in the, the last couple of days of our time there, we visited some of the women um, who uh, have sort of graduated for their time at the outreach program and are now running um, sustainable businesses. So this involved going to their houses where they've set up, um, yeah, the start of what is now to be their main source of income. So yeah, there are some incredible and inspiring women that we met. Um, the first lady uh, was living in a little community uh, in Addis and she had started uh, brewing her own beer. So she'd kind of created this amazing community every Sunday where people nearby would come down to buy this beer that she was making, you know, from scratch, involving barley and all kinds of crazy ingredients that she laid out on the table for us. And we even got to sample some of it. Um, she was also like raising sheep at her um, property, which of course got me very excited. As some of you know, I wrote The Golden Echo on a farm in Los Angeles. Um, so I got pretty excited about that. Um, it was really amazing to see, you know, this woman who had, you know, three children um, and had come from a really, you know, kind of hopeless situation. And now, um, you know, talking about her dreams of opening a restaurant and a bar because she'd had so much action come through the community through this beer that she was um, brewing and um, really starting to see a real future for herself and totally speaking with a, a sense of, you know, determination that she could expand her business and make it something really profitable. Um, her living conditions were, you know, vastly different from the woman that I'd seen you know, the first few days who were um, living, you know, their kids sleeping on mud ground. Um, this lady now had a bed for her children. She had, you know, a nice setup. Very simple, very simple. But um, you don't need much to kind of be happy, I guess. And she had all the basics in place. And it was so amazing to, yeah, to see how that had come together for her. Um, the next lady that we visited, uh, a lady called Esther, um, was living up on Mount Ontoto, which is the same mountain where these women um, were originally going up to kind of receive healing from the holy water that was evidently up there, um, which didn't turn out to be holy at all. But um, <laughs> yeah, she had uh, now developed a business um, at her house um, selling barley and, and, and kole and also charcoal. So that was her, um, her business. And it was incredible to see the land that she had developed. So, um, it was, a, you know, a mud hut that she'd built herself with her own hands out of mud from the ground and teff grass. And they literally mix it with water and like, you know, build these houses. It's just incredible to see the work that goes into it. Um, and uh, her, her and her husband um, had this business together. He was, um, you know, weaving scarves with cotton and she was selling charcoal. And then she was like doing business while we were there talking with her. Guys were coming along and kind of buying stuff off her and watching her do the, you know, do this kind of uh, transaction in front of us was just so fulfilling and exciting. Um, especially again, knowing where she had come from, you know, being uh, sleeping out. Um, on the ground with her with her children and kind of um you know yeah starving and not being able to feed her babies and now she kind of had all this hope in her life and had really built um an amazing living scenario as well 
had a kitchen outside where she had like her own injera oven, um, had, you know, <laughs> nice little restroom, like outdoor toilet vibe, you can imagine. Um, there was cabbage going, you know, outside vegetables that she'd actually met, you know, sort of created this amazing, um, way of, uh, propping up the cabbage using like old coca-cola bottles and all of these really amazing sort of ways of um using whatever resource they had to kind of um develop uh their their their, their land and their their lives and their livelihood so that was that was amazing and then we went to visit a lady called Marta 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 lost a, a child a, a 12 year old child um to what might have been um HIV also because a lot of these women of course you know can pass the illness on to their um, their kids um, and she pulled out the photo book and started showing us and yeah it was heavy it was super heavy and um, but she was was pregnant with another child um, and also had two others I believe if I remember correctly so she was supporting a couple of children um, and about to bring another one into the world uh, and she had also really um, got herself out of um, acute poverty um, through the help of Bezer and through the help of this sort of startup money that they received to, 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 to build their business. She was breeding chickens, um, which of course I got really excited about again because I lived with chickens on this little um, urban farm <laughs> that I lived in. And um, she also was selling cola, kolo, which is a kind of barley snack that um, people eat in Ethiopia. Um, and, and doing really well for herself, you know, it's like early days for a lot of these women, but to see the joy in their faces, just that sense of a little bit of financial independence, which can make a world of difference. And that sense of like being able to provide a future for your kids. Um, one of the, the women, uh, Teshe, who had a, a son who was an incredible artist, we saw some of his work and it was really, really amazing. And she was, um, uh, she had him enrolled in art school and you know he was doing really well and kind of like starting to see a future for himself maybe as an artist and that kind of stuff just makes me so excited you know um, kids coming from such a hard um, you know upbringing but really starting to like see a future for themselves which could mean you know not only being able to help themselves but also help their parents you know and, and give back to their parents which is a, a big incentive for a lot of the kids in Ethiopia to go to university so that was really really encouraging um I definitely yeah I definitely feel pretty changed from this trip and um I uh, felt very grateful to have a platform to share it and I've been really excited to see that some of you are excited by um my stories um from the trip uh I guess what I've walked away um with from this trip is kind of like a new appreciation of um, what love can look like, you know, in these countries, there is such a selflessness, um, especially from the woman, I think, you know, who are in these kind of um, situations that demand so much from them physically, but they, they keep fighting, you know, and they, um, they keep, they keep moving forward all for the, um, or for the sake of their children and at times it's you know six children that they have to support and and, and haven't necessarily had much help in doing that um and even fighting an, an illness like hiv you know they still just have such an incredible um yeah just uh, incredible spirit um and i think on top of that what has been really inspiring is um watching the the workers you know the workers from from Beza and the work that they're doing um with these women um and many of them are men, which is kind of like, I, I guess I wasn't expecting that. I thought it might be woman helping the woman, but it's been so inspiring to see um, the incredible, you know, and maternal like love that they have for the woman um, and just how genuine and completely authentic it is. Um, so, you know, it's always been a an interesting um, and sometimes controversial topic, uh, you know, work with women, you know, when it comes to uh, missionary type stuff, or um, I think there are a lot of loud voices out there um, that aren't necessarily showing the best side of that world, you know, and uh, I kind of felt this responsibility to, to, to speak out for the ones that are doing the incredible work out in these countries, the ones that are usually the soft-spoken um, kinds of people, not the loud um, preaching from the the street corner type um they're just working away behind the scenes 
building relationships. And um, that to me is, um, is really the most powerful thing. And, you know, building connections with the, with the woman and, and really helping them to um, feel a sense of value in their life again. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel that these people don't necessarily get, you know, the headlines, they don't get the, the airtime on TV and um, a lot of the, the people perhaps with, you know, not quite the best of intentions are, um, are the ones with all the kind of promo. So I, I do feel like a responsibility to, to speak out about what these people are doing out there and just how excited I am to feel a part of that movement and that change that's going on in, um, in Ethiopia. And I hope it's inspired some of you to maybe um, look into it yourself and um, whether that's, you know, researching a, a charity you believe in or just thinking about going and taking a trip yourself over to one of these countries because there's something extremely powerful about, um, yeah, sitting down with these women, hearing their stories, holding hands with them, singing and dancing with them, which is something I got to enjoy. Um, and I think, yeah, that can make a world of difference in terms of um, just how you feel you can make it make a difference in the world. Um, so I'm excited to now develop um, my own sort of uh, conversation with um, these women moving forward and perhaps there'll be opportunities to ask you to partner with me in that. Um, but the purpose of this was really just to share some of my stories. There's no, um, no agenda really except to, um, yeah, inspire a sense of, um, a sense of hope um because it can feel overwhelming um yeah how much sort of need there is in the world but i really have seen um some incredible uh some incredible changes in these women's lives which just really comes from like simple compassion and simple um strategic thinking about how we you know help these people move forward um sustainable businesses you know it's an exciting thing um so yeah i'll leave it there but thank you again for giving me um a chance to share and i hope that you've taken something away from these little video diaries um so much love from los angeles thank you